My students often want to learn how to compute the margin of error for a political poll or a survey. It's pretty easy. Let's go through an example. This particular study was discussed on Meet the Press one morning. Essentially, everything he's touched his adult life is under investigation. All of this may be taking a toll on the president. We have a brand new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll out this morning. On the Russia investigation, 62% say President Trump has not been honest and truthful. That's a growing number in our poll, and it's across the board, Democrats, independents, and Republicans. Just 34% say he has been honest and truthful. So you can see the margin of error that's reported at the bottom is plus and minus 3.27%. Let's try to replicate that and make sense of it. First thing I did was Google this particular story so that I can find the original article. And when I found that article, I found a link to the actual report that discussed the data that was collected. When I opened up that report, I found out that it was based on 900 adults who were interviewed. And those 900 interviews produced a margin of error of plus or minus 3.27%. We want to try to replicate that number. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. The first way for computing the margin of error is an estimate, but it's based on a really simple formula. And all you need to know is that sample size. In our formula, the sample size is n. n just stands for the number of people that you measured. When we take 1 and we divide by the square root of the sample size, we end up with 0 0.0333 repeating which if we move that decimal place two places to the right, we'd find that that's 3.33%. Now that's pretty close to what was reported in that original research report. Based on those 900 interviews, the margin of error that was reported was plus or minus 3.27%. We're pretty close. If we want to get that number exactly, we need to use a somewhat more sophisticated formula. So let's look at the second example. This particular formula maximizes the possible variability when given two choices. So it essentially takes the margin of error and it makes it as large as it could be. In this particular situation, when we work out the math, we end up with 0.0326 repeating. And if we were to move that decimal place two places to the right and then round up just a little bit, we'd get 3.27%, which is exactly what the research report reported for the margin of error. Now let's talk about how we can make sense of what that margin of error represents. The margin of error is based on computing a 95% confidence interval. A confidence interval is a range of values that has a very high probability, 95% chance, of including the true population value. So from our sample data, we're trying to learn the true population value. Let's focus in on that 62% of the people who believe that the president has not been honest or truthful. And let's take that margin of error, 3.27%, and just simplify it for a minute. Let's just say we're talking about plus or minus 3%. So what we want to do is take 62 and add 3%. That would be 65%. And then take that same number, 62, and subtract 3%. That would be 59%. Those two numbers represent the lower and the upper bounds of our confidence interval. When we put it together, we can interpret it this way. We can be 95% confident because the probability is 0.95. That's somewhere between 59% and 65% of the population believes the president has not been honest or truthful. That's just an introductory primer to computing and interpreting the margin of error. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel.